Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. Most of us have seen movies or television shows where sharks have been portrayed as marauders who prey on unsuspecting swimmers or smaller fish in the sea. But many Wild Kingdom episodes illustrate how sharks and other predators are an important part of the food chain in our underwater world. Oceans cover 70% of our planet, yet we still have much to learn about this important ecosystem. Modern technology has enhanced our ability to study the oceans with minimal disruption to their habitat. Human involvement and recent legislation to protect underwater creatures allow for the resurgence of these many species. There's more good news to come in the Wild Kingdom, so sit back and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom right here on RFD TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by Mutual of Omaha, people you can count on. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Among the most intelligent of animals in the world is the California sea lion, the animal often trained for circus acts. Now dedicated scientists of the United States Navy have begun to utilize sea lion intelligence and ability in a more useful and important way. The sea lions used are wild animals captured and trained to recover test equipment on the ocean floor. It's amazing to see how these wild marine mammals are trained to wear a harness, which they adapt to quickly, and then are taught to swim to the object to be recovered and attach this grasping device to the object. In the case of missile recovery, the sea lion swims to the bottom with the grasping device to which a cord is attached. When the animal locates the missile, it attaches the grasper and then swims freely back to the surface. With a line now stretching from boat to missile, the device can easily be recovered. There is no danger to the sea lions because they can do easily and safely deep water jobs, which for man would be dangerous, costly, time consuming, and in many cases fruitless. Recently, I was invited by the United States Navy to observe this project in operation at the Naval Undersea Center at San Diego, California. Here I saw how man and animal are working together on the project, which we call Operation Quick Find. The warm Pacific waters near San Diego are part of the home range of the California sea lion. This lighthouse marks the tip of a jutting stretch of rocky coast known as Point Loma. From this vantage point, you can see far up the sweeping shoreline to a beach where a group of sea lions have hauled out. California sea lions were chosen for Operation Quick Find because they can dive as deep as 750 feet, a depth that would present complex life support problems for a human diver. The animals being trained by the Navy were all captured wild on beaches like this one. Just ahead is the Naval Undersea Center where several sea lions have been undergoing training for many months. The program was developed at the Marine Life Sciences Laboratory of the Undersea Center and is entering its final phase now. Today, I'll review the step-by-step -step learning process that prepares an animal for deep water recovery work with the head of the training program, Chief Gordon Seibrant of Inshore Underseas Warfare Group One. His star pupil, a two-year-old sea lion named Sniffer, will show what he's learned while I check his report card, a chart showing the time required for each training step. Once the animal learns to eat from his trainer's hand, he's conditioned to allow a rubber ring to be placed over his head. A blast on the whistle and a reward of fish tell him he's done the job right. This is a prelude to harness training and it took Sniffer a total of seven days to accept the ring. 
Next, the ring is replaced by the next strap of a harness. And again, the whistle and a fish reinforce the learning. When a sea lion accepts the neck band, the harness is loosely buckled around him. Every animal learns at a different rate, and sniffer is about average. Harness training required a total of 14 days. Muzzle training follows, and this step generally takes a little longer because it involves the sensitive nose. However, Sniffer only took 14 days before he willingly accepted the muzzle, which is needed to attach the nose cone that will eventually hold the grabber device. Training moves ahead in small steps, always building on the familiar, and patience is a key virtue for Chief Cybrant. But nose cone conditioning only took one day. When the nose cone training is complete, the sea lion enters the next phase of the program. At this point, Sniffer is completely handleable and responsive to his trainer. Wearing the harness, he can be led by the leash like a pet dog to the location of his more advanced behavior training. Sniffer has come a long way from a wild animal with a built-in fear of man. But there are still more lessons to learn before he can achieve the objective of this program. Carrying this grabber device down through deep ocean water, locating a training missile embedded in the bottom, and then placing the grabber around the missile and with one push, tripping it. Once the grabber is locked on, the missile can be raised by the attached line. But before the sea lion can place the grabber, it must be trained to locate the missile by homing in on the signal from this pinger device. The sound carries far underwater, and it can be picked up easily by the sensitive hearing of a sea lion. Sniffer has learned to follow the underwater sounds to their source. It's a complex lesson, and it took a total of six days for Sniffer to master it. His next lesson builds on learned behavior. He now carries the nose cone to the signal with a line attached. This line will eventually be attached to the grabber, and so Sniffer must learn to pull it. It took four days before moving on to the next phase of training. A dummy missile with the signal device attached becomes the new target. Only one new learning element is added at a time, so Sniffer will carry the nose cone again. Teaching Sniffer to hit the missile with the cone took two days. Then the next step could begin with this dummy grabber replacing the cone. The sea lions of Operation Quick Find must be taught to push the grabber against the missile after they locate it, hitting the missile in the right spot with enough force to trip the device. These are complicated training tasks, and while Sniffer performs them reliably now, it took all of 14 days to reach the next step. This training grabber more closely duplicates the action of the real one. The trigger button requires the same tripping force as the actual grabber, so it brings Sniffer one step closer to the experience of a real recovery. It's easy to follow Sniffer's performance in the shallow pool, but in deeper water, the training team will rely on the tripped arms of the training grabber as evidence that the task has been completed. There's a big difference between conditions in the training pool and deep water operation. So now Sniffer will move to a brand new classroom, the open sea. 
Now that the confined training of the sea lions at the Naval Undersea Center was over, a new phase of training began under different conditions in the open ocean. Training moves closer to the real thing now with the deep water recovery of a dummy missile. We're nearing the training site and Chief Cybran's crew will prepare for the next step in the sea lion's learning chain. On the ocean floor, this rig will resemble an actual missile with its nose buried in the bottom silt after a test firing. The water is about 100 feet deep here, more of a challenge to sniffer than the shallow training pool. The barge will move away from the missile once it's down because searching for the missile is an important part of this exercise. The target's on the bottom and it's time to launch the search boat. Chief Cybrant has already led Sniffer through four weeks of open ocean training and today we'll see how much he's learned. In actual recoveries, a small search boat like this will carry the sea lion to the downed missile, so we'll operate from it as part of the training routine. This open sea work picks up where pool training leaves off with the practice grabber. But today, it will have several hundred feet of line attached. For a better look at the training procedure, I'll observe from underwater as the recovery crew reviews the basic learning steps of the open ocean work. We'll be ready to go as soon as Chief Cybran brings an essential member of the recovery team aboard. Whenever Sniffer or one of the other animals of Operation Quick Find is in the water, the barge flies these flags, an international signal that there's a diver below. In this case, a trained sea lion. On this training exercise today, it's hard to imagine that this was a wild animal only a few months ago. <coughs> The barge has moved away from the missile, and now we'll try to locate it on the bottom. Petty Officer Dan Peterson listens for the signal from the missile picked up by this hydrophone. It's highly directional, so by gauging the strength of the signal in his earphones, he can determine the missile's general location. We're over the dummy missile, and now I'll observe Sniffer's performance from below. Dan holds the small boat steady over the target missile as the recovery training proceeds. I'll double check on the missile's placement before Sniffer starts down. The boat is directly over the missile, looking surprisingly realistic. Now we'll see how well Sniffer responds to the missile signal at this depth. Here in the open water, a sea lion could easily escape. So in this first stage of ocean training, a tether line has been attached to the harness. The training grabber carries the heavier recovery line. A perfect hit. And now Snipper wants that fish he knows is waiting for him above. He's done well, but at this point he's still held captive by the tether line. In the final stage of training before an actual recovery, the tether line is removed. From this point on, Sniffer is completely free. The 
air signal on the missile's tail is still sending out its sound. This close, I can hear it clearly. And Sniffer can hear it easily at the surface. He's following it right to its source. There are miles of open ocean around, but he's heading right back for the boat. His training has made him a reliable member of the recovery team. Now the final training step, carrying an actual grabber down to the missile. Sniffer has passed every test. He's completed his training, and now we're ready for the real recovery operation. With the sea lions and all equipment ready in the recovery boat, the final test was at hand, launching a missile and recovering it from the ocean floor. We're sailing into position to stand by for a test missile launch. The recovery boat is skippered by Chief Petty Officer Bartlow. We've received a radio message that the missile is ready for firing, and our view from the bridge should be excellent. Just off our starboard side is the ship that will launch the test missile. It'll be firing directly away from us, and the countdown is underway. It's going down several miles from our location, and we'll head for the splash. We're in the impact area now, and our first job is to find the missile somewhere at the bottom of this ocean. The search boat is ready, and I'll be joined underwater by a Navy observer, Ensign Malaris. <laughs> Sniffer is eager for action as always, and the diving flags are raised. If Sniffer can find the missile and attach the grabber, then we'll carry the line in this small boat back to the recovery ship. We saw the missile go down in this area, and the hydrophone should give us a definite location fix. We seem to be almost directly over the missile. We'll see if we can locate the missile by sight so we can observe Sniffer in his first actual recovery operation. The water's deeper here, but visibility is good. We can't go much deeper with this scuba gear. The missile is resting a good 40 or 50 feet beyond our maximum safe depth, but we have an excellent view. Now it's up to Sniffer. Sniffer could easily have followed the signal into water hundreds of feet deeper. <laughs> Ensign Malaris and I will try to follow the missile to the surface once the search boat carries the grabber line back to the recovery boat and hoisting begins. So far, the system is working perfectly, 
and all that remains is to haul the missile aboard. The missile is clear of the bottom. It's amazing to think that the recovery of this highly valuable instrument package was accomplished with the help of a sea lion. The line is securely attached by the tripped grabber. Sniffer put it in exactly the right spot. Sniffer's passed his biggest test today, and once the missile is hoisted aboard, we'll head back to his home at the undersea center. But I think he'd rather stay out here and die for missiles. The missile should be aboard soon. This recovery system has proven simple and practical with a sea lion as well-trained as Sniffer. The recovery is almost complete. The missile will be aboard in a few minutes more. Sniffer has earned an extra bonus of fish today. The water will keep Sniffer comfortable while we head back to port. Now he's a full-fledged member of Operation Quick Fly. The work being done by dedicated personnel of the Naval Undersea Center and the Inshore Undersea Warfare Group 1 is important from more than just a military viewpoint. It shows that wild animals, without being mistreated or endangered, can be taught to live and work with man. Operation Quick Find may open a whole new plateau of relationship between man and sea lions. It's possible that the sea lions could as easily be trained for rescue work in locating and recovering disabled mini-subs, or as surface-to-ocean floor messengers for undersea laboratories. They might even be able to locate sunken ships or aircraft. Certainly, as man learns more about the abilities of sea lions and other animals which inhabit his world, the more he appreciates them and the more he learns to respect and protect the ever-important wild kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, people you can count on, has presented Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, helping people find Medicare solutions for over 50 years. To learn more about plan options or how to protect your kingdom, contact us today. Mutual of Omaha, protect your kingdom.